Let me tell you the story of how it all started. The school bell rang, signaling that it was finally 1.20 p.m. Hungry high schoolers were rushing out of their classrooms and pushing past everyone, trying to grab their lunch before the long lines formed. Here I was with my wonderful friend Scout, one of the previous presenters, following the wave of students gathering at the front of the cafeteria when we were stopped by a French teacher. This teacher, who didn't teach either of us that year, asked us to sit down and have a quick chat with him. Hey, you guys are always working in the Innovation Center, right? Listen, I have this cool idea. Could you try to explore this further? Now, if any of you have seen the Black Panther movie, you would know that like many other superheroes, he has his own unique suit. His suit has the ability to absorb the impact from punches and projectiles thrown at him. The cherry on top, though, is the suit's ability to charge itself from those attacks and redistribute that energy back against his opponents. The teacher's idea revolved around a soccer ball. I know what you might be thinking. What great idea can come from an object that people play with from time to time? At least, that's what we were initially thinking. But we soon found out that this was not just any ordinary soccer ball. This was a soccer ball that can absorb the energy from a person's kick. A soccer ball that can store that energy to be used later. A soccer ball that sounds like it's made from Black Panther suit. This teacher likely heard from his colleagues that we are prospective engineering students who love innovation. I mean, it's practically impossible not to see us hanging around the makerspace at least once a day, either studying, building a robot, working on a project, or teaching newcomers how to use the equipment there. From this, the teacher believed us capable of bringing his idea to life. The conversation with him left us dazed, but definitely intrigued. We ended up spending the rest of lunch wondering if and how that could be possible. Eventually, it inspired us to, to develop something even better. See, that is the power of STEM, the ability to problem solve, innovate, and transform small ideas into impactful opportunities. Hello, my name is Caroline Jang, and I am a senior at Miami Country Day School. I'm one of the founders of the Entrepreneurship, Invention, and Innovation Honor Society, or EI Squared for short. I will also be a part of MIT's class of 2028, majoring in mechanical engineering starting this fall. <laughs> Even though I'm all of these things, I still feel like a regular student, someone who practices sports after school, plays games, and enjoys chatting with friends. Growing up in an Asian household, my mother always pushed me and my younger sister to try new things and set ambitious goals. This is what led me to joining the newly formed robotics club in my junior year. Through this, I discovered my school's innovation center and all the amazing tools it provided. There are three huge maker spaces full of spare material, kits to build robots and electronics, and always a few lost screws on the ground. I eventually joined EI Squared because I enjoy applying the lessons I've learned in the class with the abundant resources offered. In this presentation, I will talk about the project that Scout and I started as a requirement for EI Squared and what it can contribute to the world. During the time of inspiration, we were both in AP Physics. That class taught us the law of conservation of energy, how energy can neither be created nor destroyed, only transferred from one form to another. Building something that can accomplish what the French teacher requested would definitely require us to apply that principal rule of physics. We figured that the input must be a form of kinetic energy, either translational or rotational, and the output would result in electrical energy. 
After a bit of brainstorming, we came up with a simple yet effective solution to capture the energy of motion. The goal was to build an energy generating floor tile, one that could transfer the energy from a person's step into usable energy. This, we felt, was much more applicable for the general population compared to the soccer ball. It was also much more doable with the resources we had on hand at the makerspace. We needed to figure out a way to transfer the tile's vertical motion into rotational motion, as our motor generates electricity by spinning. This was achieved by attaching a linear gear to the bottom of the tile and connecting that with a 3D printed gear. As what typically happens with all great projects though, we quickly encountered an issue with this design. How can we turn an inch of movement into a reasonable amount of rotations for the motor? See, the good thing about gears is that we can easily manipulate its ratios. By mounting a compound gear train, we were able to increase the speed of the final gear to spin the motor many times a second. Electricity is then generated by the motor, which is connected to a battery to store that energy. During our building and researching process, though, a turning point was reached. We stumbled upon a company, PaveGen, that had already pioneered and patented designs similar to ours a decade ago. Man, if only we had started this in first grade. This discovery made our exploration into the subject much more conceptual. We shifted from wanting to build and publicize what we thought was an original design to thinking about its implications. This extra bit of clean energy can have many practical uses in people's day-to-day -day lives. We asked ourselves, where can this creation be used? Who would it be used by? And why should it be used? Through our research, we observed that PageGen's tiles were installed in areas with large groups of people engaged in high amounts of activities, like fairs, concerts, festivals, marathons, and schools. We started to comprehend the impact it can have when used in bustling cities. But we wondered, why limit ourselves? Why not make it global? Why not share it with the ones that need it the most? People in rural areas without ready access to electricity and clean and renewable energy. These advancements deserve to help improve the lives, not just of the developed world, but of the developing as well. Imagine this, you are a citizen in Delhi, India, one of the most vibrant and populated cities in the world, but one of the most polluted as well. Pedestrians like you help reduce the number of imported coal by walking on these tiles installed in busy walkways and town centers. Instead of apartments, street lamps, etc., being solely powered by fossil fuels, this extra energy you generated can share a bit of that load. To prove that this is a valuable investment, let's go through some of the math together. Bear with me for a moment, as a lot of numbers are going to come up. According to engineering.com, the average step produces about eight joules of energy. Because no system is fully efficient, we'll assume that 50% of it is lost to things like friction and heat. So each step would generate about four joules of energy. If we have 20 tiles always in use in an area, we would produce around 80 joules of energy per second. For reference, an LED light bulb requires 10 joules of energy per second. So with this setup, we would be able to power approximately eight light bulbs. Now, this number may seem small, and you'd be right, but that is on par with most sources of renewable energy, with far less complications. Solar panels don't work at night, and wind turbines don't work well in serene places. These tiles, on the other hand, can function anywhere, 24-7. That's not to say that there aren't limitations to it, though. For instance, 
These tiles would have been a fruitless idea in COVID-19 because most people worked and lived at home. But these tiles are not built to single-handedly support a massive amount of people. These tiles are here to work alongside and take the burden off traditional sources of energy while also limiting the amount of pollution generated. To this day, we still don't know why a French teacher, of all people, approached us with a STEM project. What felt like an interesting but trivial conversation eventually revealed limitless potentials for the world. Now, this technology is not the end all be all, but as we like to say, it's a step in the right direction. <laughs>